Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. The Ruby roundtables that included discussions about modern JavaScript frameworks were so popular. And then I've also been getting more requests to include more JavaScript in Ruby Thursday. So I decided to go ahead and bring in a guest host for the first time. Jeff Denton will be our host for the next mini series, which will indeed include information on how to integrate modern JavaScript frameworks into Rails. Jeff is an accomplished JavaScript developer. He's helped numerous startups in the New York City area develop their front end frameworks and shave milliseconds off of their load times. And we've worked with him on several projects, and he's fantastic. I hope you enjoy this mini series on integrating modern JavaScript frameworks into Rails. Hi, I'm Jeff Denton, and in this episode, we're going to talk about JavaScript. We're going to learn about Node, Webpack, and how to integrate them into your Rails project. If you want to code along, you can clone the Ruby Thursday example app. Today, we're going to be creating a new branch. So after you've cloned the repo, create your branch, cd into Ruby Thursday, bundle, then Rails DB create and DB migrate. So what is Node? Node.js is a JavaScript runtime built on Chrome's V8 JavaScript engine. Node uses an event-driven, non-blocking I.O. model that makes it lightweight and efficient. Node's package ecosystem, NPM, is the largest ecosystem of open source libraries in the world. Wow, so what does that mean? Well, basically, it's a platform for easily building fast and scalable network applications. We're going to be using Node to run Webpack. Webpack is a preprocessor and module bundler for modern dynamic JavaScript applications, and it's not limited to bundling JavaScript, which is what makes it so great. It can be configured to handle your images, your fonts, your CSS, your post-CSS, SAS, whatever styling preprocessor you want to use. It's extremely configurable, so there's a lot to do to get it running. But luckily, we have the Webpacker gem, the official Webpack implementation for Rails, and it's built in starting at Rails 5.1. Webpacker is going to do the configuration for us, so we can get right to writing code. But we've got a few things to install first, so let's get going. The first thing we're going to do is delete CoffeeScript. We're not going to need that anymore. Then head over to App, Assets, JavaScripts, and get rid of any CoffeeScript files in there. And since we'll be handling our scripts and styles with Webpack from now on, we're going to add some config to development.rb to prevent these assets from being created. So head over to development.rb, and then at the bottom, we'll paste in this line. Now that we're done with that, it's time to get installing. If you don't have Node installed, there are a few ways to do it. You can download it from nodejs.org, or you can use a version manager like NVM or NDENV. If you're familiar with RVM or RBENV, you'll feel right at home with these options. Node.js.org is by far the easiest option, but in the long run, you'll probably benefit from one of the version managers. I use NVM and I like it, so I'm going to recommend choosing that. But now you should pause the video, pick whichever method is most comfortable for you, and then come back and we'll keep moving. Okay, that wasn't too bad, was it? Now that we have Node installed, we have to install Yarn. Yarn is a fast, reliable, and secure dependency management system. It's like Bundler for JavaScript. You may have heard of or used NPM or Node Package Manager before. They're a lot alike, but Yarn has some performance and security enhancements under the hood, but the differences are not important to us right now. Webpacker requires Yarn, so we're going with it. Yarn is easily installed with Homebrew. So run brew install yarn, or if you're on Ubuntu, it looks like the easiest way to get it is to use apt get. Finally, we're on to Webpack. The Webpacker gem is included in Rails 5.1 on, but if you're working with an older version, like we are here, head on over to your gem file and let's add Webpacker. Now open up your terminal and run bundle. And finally, Rails Webpacker install. 
This is gonna take a minute to install, so we're gonna head back over to the project and take a look at all these new files. Back in our code editor, you'll see that we now have the folder app JavaScript packs. This is gonna be our entry point, but we'll get to that later. For now, head on over to the finder and check out the node modules folder. This has automatically been added to your gitignore, and you'll see why really quickly. Yarn installed 632 dependencies, yet you really don't want to commit that. You also never want to work in these files. They're strictly dependencies and dependencies of dependencies and so on. These dependencies are stored in the package.json file. You can consider this the node equivalent to the gem file, except that we'll be using Yarn to manage them. Next, we'll check out what's in the config slash webpack folder. This is what's so magical about the webpack or gem. It's all done. I've actually spent days agonizing over getting my Webpack config just right, so this saves a ton of effort. Of course, there's more customization that you'll probably want to do as your app grows, but for now, we're good to go. You can see here that our files are really nicely organized. We've got separate files for all our environments, development, production, and test. And here is a folder for our loaders. Loaders tell Webpack how to transform the file so it can be added to the bundle. Let's check out babel.js. This is our JavaScript configuration. We're exporting a set of rules so Webpack knows what to do with the file. Test is a regex that checks the extension so that Webpack knows which loader to run on the file. Exclude is another regex that does exactly what it sounds like, and as you can see, the node modules folder is already in here. We definitely want to ignore that. The loader we use for JavaScript is the Babel loader. Babel is a de facto tool for JavaScript compilation. It uglifies, concatenates, converts our ES6 or ES2017 JavaScript into something that can be run in the browser. If you need to configure your ES6 transpilation, you can do that down here in the .babelrc file. Sometimes you might want to use some more bleeding edge features that aren't included in Babel core yet, and that goes here. We can add what stage of JavaScript transpilation we want to use and add plugins to get specific features, but we really don't need to worry about that right now. The ENV preset supports all completed proposals, so we don't need to worry about anything changing in the future. Now, let's head back up to app JavaScript packs and check out application.js. Any file in this folder is gonna be compiled into a pack file or entry point for our application. Other modules and application files should be built within the app slash JavaScript folder and included in the main pack file. We'll see how to do that later. Since we already have an application.js in app assets JavaScript, for the purpose of this video, we're going to rename this file to bundle. And on line 7, we can see how to include our new bundle file. Let's change this to bundle and copy it. Head on over to our application layout file and paste it in below the application.js include. In your terminal, fire up your Rails server and in a fresh tab, run dot bin slash webpack dash dev dash server. And now for the moment of truth. Head on over to the browser, hit refresh. And there we go. Hello world from webpacker. So that's the full setup, but we haven't written any JavaScript yet. So before we leave, I just want to show you one quick thing. This function is just going to wait for the document to be ready and change the background color. I'm going to do a split panel and show you a little bit of the browser. Now watch what happens when you hit save. Webpack compiled the JavaScript and immediately refreshed the page when it was finished. And it works with other colors too. I know that was a lot of installation and explanation, but I want to take a second to appreciate the Webpacker gem. The amount of flexibility and power we've added to our app in a few minutes is incredible. Since Webpack also handles CSS and image assets, if you're using a framework like React or Angular, it can even be used to replace the asset pipeline. Setting up a project with modern JavaScript and Webpack is actually pretty complicated, and Webpacker makes it easy. Thanks so much, and in the next episode, we're going to be writing some JavaScript. That's it for this episode of Ruby Thursday. If you are not already on my mailing list, head on over to rubythursday.com to sign on up and check out older episodes if you're new. 
If you are not subscribed on YouTube, you can click that big ruby there to subscribe. And here are some other videos that you might be interested in. YouTube subscribers get the episodes just a little bit before everyone else. If you have any comments or questions, it's best to leave those on YouTube. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.